Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the webinar about the OSET College Challenge for National Engineering Month Ontario 2016. My name is Erica and I am your host for this webinar. Um, if you were invited to it, it means that you are either a student participant in the College Challenge for 2016 or you're a member of a chapter who is supporting uh, one of the students. Um, one of the student teams, one or more of the student teams potentially, uh, or you're a faculty advisor or you're another one of the fabulous volunteers that makes the OSET College Challenge possible year after year. I'm going to get into a little bit more about the College Challenge in a moment, but first I just want to pause to um, give a big thanks to OSET, who is the um, patron, the uh, inventor, the innovator of this particular uh, college challenge, this, this event that we put together, um, along with Professional Engineers Ontario, Engineers Without Borders Canada, and the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers uh, is a partner, a founding partner of National Engineering Month in Ontario. So we're going to go through a little bit of an agenda. Just a note, this webinar is being recorded. Feel free to answer and enter any questions at any moment that you have them into the chat window. I have muted everybody but myself uh, for now, just to keep the recording nice and clean, um, but we will have an opportunity for questions at the end of the call. So feel free to put things in the chat window. I'll answer them as I go along um, or you will have an opportunity to ask questions with your voice at the end of the uh, of the webinar. So uh, first a little bit about OSET for those that might not know um, and then a bit about the OSET College Challenge now in its third year. It's doing very very well. The goals of the challenge and how we're doing and then talking a little more specifically about the roles of the students to make sure everything is successful and the role of the OSET chapters. We're going to get right down into some key details. We've done this. This is as I said this is our third year. Uh, we had some you know we had some learnings in the first couple of years but we're starting to get those bumps smoothed out and uh, we can now give you the benefit of those learnings now. Uh, we also have a, a list of this year's teams. Um, as of today, today is December 16th and uh, things can always change before March, but we think that these are the teams that will be going into the College cha Challenge with. Uh, we have a great turnout this year, uh, some key dates for everyone to remember and some time for questions. So again, I'm going to make this presentation available to you. I'll send you a copy of the slides as well. There will be a video replay of this presentation. So for those who don't know, OSET stands for the Ontario Association of Certified Engineering Technicians and Technologists, a uh, very important governing, self-governing body uh, here in Canada, um, in Ontario rather, governs the engineering and applied science technicians and technologists. Uh, so the, the designations that they uh, preside over are the CET, the ACSCST, and the CTEC. I knew I could get those out. Um, so as I mentioned, OSET is a founding partner of National Engineering Month along with PEO and this year OSPE, uh, the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers, joined together. And really the, the purpose and the significance of this collaboration is that it means we're speaking as one voice. Uh, we're getting all of these professional associations together that do different things in their different communities, in their different niches of the engineering and technology space. Uh, we're working together to say, you know, the average sixth grader, seventh grader, or even the average member of the adult general public does not know as much as they should know about the value that we bring to society, the ways that the, the processes and the products and the systems that we maintain and manufacture and put out into the world every day uh, benefit everyone. Uh, so we know that we don't want to bog down the general public with acronyms. They're not going to understand what which, which uh, association is which. However, we do want to make sure we're giving them good, clear messages um, and nice imagery to work with. This is an example of last year's campaign, the National Engineering Month 2015 campaign um, that talked about how there is a place for you and you know encourage the young people to see themselves in the professions that we um, that the that we enjoy so much and we feel are so important so we're really inspiring the next generation that's what this campaign is all about so in order to attract um, a lot of interest from college students. We have a lot of uh, university students that have been involved with National Engineering Month, putting on events, volunteering their time, 
for a very long time, we didn't have as much action on the college side. So three years ago, we got together with OSET and decided we wanted to create a little bit of an incentive to encourage college students to get involved and be ambassadors of the engineering technology professions in the same way that the university students were doing. So we came up with this idea that if we offered up a, a, call, a, a cash prize and one year OSET student membership for teams of college students to get involved, that perhaps that would prove an incentive for them to come and get involved with National Engineering Month um, and team up with their local OSET chapters. So we had a few goals in mind. One, we wanted to Im improve OSET's network within the colleges. And we've definitely been successful in doing that. Over the course of the past couple of years, we've seen organizers apply on behalf of their NSOC, that stands for Engineering Society, the IEEE Student Branch, the Fire Protection Association, that should say, uh, that's Seneca, Women in Technology, ASME, which is the Mechanical Engineering uh, international body, as well as the Engineering Association from Sheridan. So we've been very successful on that. And I know that uh, people from OSET will be really excited to see this slide. It's a really interesting one. Um, going back to 2012, OSET was, you know, on board as a founding partner of National Engineering Month, and they were averaging about 10 um, events per campaign. So 10 in 2012, 10 in 2013 across the province in March from all of the OSET chapters. So this is the professional chapters now putting on their events. We didn't have the college challenge at that time, but we decided to try it out for 2014. And we got a very good response from the students that year. Um, I believe it was 11 uh, OSET chapter run uh, events happened uh, by the professional chapters and 13 um, student uh, run, college student run events happened because of the college challenge. So we basically doubled our engagement in 2014, which was an awesome spike of growth that we've seen. Uh, the following year, obviously, word got around a little more about the college student events, um, about the college challenge itself. A few more uh, OSET chapters were pulled on board by the the um, the, the way that they supported their, their student teams the previous years. Now we had 15 uh, OSET events uh, events run by the, the chapters, and I believe it was 18 last year for a total of 33 OSET run events. Um, so again, this is the professionals and the students chipping in together to make really great involvement in the campaign. This year, uh, although these are preliminary numbers as of December 16th, that's today, is hot off the press, um, it looks like we're going to be up over 40. Uh, the total I have right now is 44 when I add up the total of the, the OSET chapter run events and the student uh, the college student run events. So this has just been a great success in growing OSET's involvement. And I added another little piece of data here that I thought people would find interesting. The first year we had five colleges represented, last year we had seven, and this year we have nine. So we're seeing steady growth as well in the number of colleges that are getting involved and saying, hey, we want to be part of this campaign to inspire the next generation, uh, get involved in our communities, become visible, um, make sure that kids really know about the engineering technology path. Um, you know, universities have a lot of uh, clout and they have a lot of money to do really fancy marketing campaigns. Um, but we found in our humble experience that, you know what, you get a person in front of a group of kids, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't have to be high tech. If they speak from the heart, if they do a really engaging activity that the kids go, wow, that's so cool. Um, if they see that role modeled ahead of them as someone who's passionate about what they do and really loves engineering technology, whatever their field is, um, that's really effective in inspiring the next generation. So we've, we feel this is so promising and, and we're really proud of the momentum we've built so far going into 2016. Again, we wanted to increase OSET's engagement within the colleges as another goal of the College Challenge, um, and we've seen that happening. OSET volunteers uh, have gotten involved at the chapter level as college liaisons to mentor the student organizers and sort of serve as a go-between between, between the college and the local OSET chapter. And then we've also had OSET members and PEO members, for that matter, getting involved to be judges at the events. So I'll speak a little bit more about the judge's role at this point. Um, they are not in a technical judging role. Um, that's fine if they want to comment and enjoy the technical aspects, if there are any, of the outreach event. However, it's important to remember in March, our main goal is to look outward. We're not talking just to each other and ourselves in our normal sort of way that we do about all of the technologies and um, sort of intricacies of our profession. Um, 
or our particular industry, we're facing outward and we're talking to the public and we're talking to young people. So we need to use different vocabulary. We need to have different, different approaches. National Engineering Month is that one time of year when we all get together and we decide um, we really want to educate the people that are outside of our normal circle and, and sort of a part of, of the community that we run in already. Um, but the judges, uh, as far as what they're doing, they are filling in and submitting a judge's report. And the thing that they look for there, oh, sorry, this is just to let you know, there are three things that we use to rank the teams because this is a competition after all we have a top ranked team at the end and then each team will receive a ranking below that and extensive comments uh, and feedback on what they did well and what they could improve so first of all what is the message that they wanted that uh that the um, student organizers wanted their audience to take away and how well did they deliver this message so you've probably seen this before if you're new to National Engineering Month you may not have um, we know just for the reasons I said before we can't afford to just stand in front of a group of young people and talk the way we do amongst ourselves about some complicated chemistry equation or high level math or other very technical um, lab specif specification, for example, um, it's just not going to fly with them. It's going to go way over their heads. It's going to make them feel intimidated. It's going to leave them doubting um, whether they could actually choose to be an engineering technologist. That's the opposite of the experience we want to create for them. We want to make sure that they are engaged, that they feel inspired. So we use simpler messages that apply no matter what field you're in, no matter what industry you're working in, which discipline of engineering and engineering technology you've chosen. You can always say there's a diverse set of challenges out there um, requiring a diversity of thinkers. There is a place for you. So again, that very welcoming, inclusive message. Engineering and technology shape the world around us. That's really important for people to understand. Um, I'm sure we all have our own favorite examples of the technology around us and how it got there and what the process was and all that kind of stuff. Um, myself, I worked in automotive for a long time, so I really like to think about, you know, how did all the components fit together and what are they all made out of and what was the process to get them that way and make sure that they were all in tolerance so that the thing fits together and works properly. Um, it's cool stuff. I, I, I think it's really neat when we can take a step back and talk about that in sort of a passionate way for people. Um, engineering and technology apply creativity and imagination to turn ideas into reality. Um, again, that applies no matter what discipline you're in, and that's a really good sort of hook or sort of way of describing what it is that we do. And last but not least, engineering and technology are essential for the safety, health, happiness, comfort, and efficiency of us around the world. Engineering and technologists, you know, we're people working for people. We make a world of difference. Um, this particular message, all four of these messages have been shown to test really well with young people. They, um, they did a research study, uh, tested out different ways of approaching, you know, the messaging around engineering and technology, basically which words you use to talk about it. And these were the ones that won out in the end. And that fourth one uh, tests especially well with young girls. So that's interesting to notice that you, you put that human element in there and uh, it makes the young girls feel that they're, you know, every bit as welcome and capable of joining the field as, as the boys, which is great. That's definitely a goal of ours. Um, so the second thing that the judges are looking for is how the event organizers incorporated the theme, there is a place for you into their event. Um, what does the theme mean to them in their event? And that's a mark out of five. There is a place for you. Speaking of the theme, it's a brand new theme for 2016. Last year it was Make a World of Difference. So this year uh, there is a place for you. This is something for students to get thinking about. How are you going to integrate that? How are you going to tell that story within your event for members of the general public? And here's a little bit more on the 2016 theme. Again, you can read this over on your own time. Uh, basically, this was written by Engineers Canada, which is the over um, sort of overarching body for all of the different engineering regulators in Canada. Um, and they kind of hold the megaphone as far as National Engineering Month's campaign at a Canada-wide level. We, of course, today are speaking on the Ontario level, um, at which we also mentally insert um, engineering and engineering technology. Uh, we feel this is really a strength of our campaign, that we're able to get up in front of a given group of children or members of the general public and speak about not only engineering, but also engineering technology. Um, so anyway, that's just a little proviso there to say, 
everything that's being said here um, about there's nothing one can't do, no heights you can't reach once you discover what engineering has to offer, that actually says engineering and engineering technology. So feel free to read this through, think about how you can take some of these ideas, um, some of these phrases and really integrate them into your event and make them come alive. Uh, third, were the participants engaged? So this, this one's pretty simple. It just means were people um, nodding off <laughs> or were they uh, alive, awake, alert, enthusiastic, paying attention, asking questions? Um, was there a decent volunteer to participant ratio? Lots of questions going back and forth. Were they using age appropriate and audience appropriate language, I would say as well? Um, were there some hands-on activities that, you know, anytime you can engage people in more than one way, show them stuff, say stuff, give them stuff to touch, play with, you know, all of that is great when you're trying to sort of give them a direct experience. Um, and again, we could talk, we could uh, facilitate some, some group discussion. That's often a good way too. You could do some stuff with social media. Um, there's really, this is only sort of a, a guideline on what you could do to make your uh, event engaging. Really lots of different ways you could do it. So the colleges represented in the challenge and perhaps those who are on the line right now. Um, Centennial coming back in a big way. They were represented last year. Um, they had a one team and one of them ended up being the, or that team ended up being the top ranked team. They won the challenge last year, which is amazing. Uh, they did a really great job on their event. Um, and they are having four teams. They're entering four teams this year, which is pretty cool. Uh, Niagara, on the other hand, brand new to the College Challenge. We'd definitely like to welcome Niagara and their uh, company, OSET Chapter, to the Challenge. Uh, Seneca uh, has been with us before. Sheridan as well, returning this time with two teams. It's so great to see the enthusiasm for the challenge growing within specific schools. Ones that have done well in previous years tend to uh, sort of um, beget more teams, which is fantastic. Humber is, uh, I believe, new to the challenge. Uh, Conestoga Engsock, they have participated before. We're glad to see them back. Same with Loyalist. George Brown participated last year with one team. This year they're up to two teams. And St. Lawrence College in Kingston, uh, welcome aboard to you. So they're new to the challenge. This is great to see. We love to see the challenge growing, as I said. Um, and we know that everyone's going to do a great job. So here we are, as, as I said, there's the team from Centennial. They did a, a fantastic job on their, on their event. If you're wondering what they did and how they won, here's how they did it. They followed every one of these requirements. So this is, students, the, this is your role. This is how you will um, participate fully in the challenge, get full marks, and uh, basically give yourself the best shot at winning. You really need to get your funding application in if you haven't done so already. Um, as of now, you know who you are that haven't gotten in the funding applications. Or if you got us a funding application but it was missing a signature from your OSET chapter, we do need you to resubmit as that is a requirement um, to get the signature from your OSET chapter so that we know that you're talking to the OSET chapter um, that is in your, your local community. Um, if you haven't done so, uh, please get those in. If you have, gold star for you. Way to go. We are we are good to go, and we will be following up with you. You'll probably see a, an email fairly soon from either me or from Alan. Um, watch your email for uh, the notification of the funding you've been awarded. Um, I can say at this point that it looks like we're going to be able to fund most of the, re of the requests that came in. We are in the process of... Um, finalizing all of those approvals, so I can't give you 100% guarantee at this point. However, if you got your funding application in on time and you did all the right things, uh, it means that you're going to get your funding. So that's good. Just watch for your email to, um, to confirm that. You want to plan and promote your event. I know lots of you are in exams and you're very busy, uh, but you can, you know, over your Christmas break, start thinking about what you'd like your event to look like, who you might like to invite, what types of speakers you might like to have, what types of booths you might like to have, um, what other sort of, um, you know, crazy publicity stunts can you cook up to get the attention of your local media. Um, really, we're going to say, I mean, you obviously have to do something that is, um, I guess, consistent with the high ethics and uh, public 
community standards that, that OSED and indeed the engineering technology profession is associated with. We don't want you doing anything dangerous or illegal. But aside from that, um, you know, we're really up for whatever you can do to represent engineering and engineering technology in a fun and positive way to the general public. So uh, I'll, I'll invite you to get going on your plans and the more creative and ambitious you can be, in our opinion, the better. If you need some help or you need some uh, inspiration, please reach out to us. Uh, another thing you need to do, this sounds funny, but some student chapters did not pick up their installment of funding from the OSET chapter, and it makes life really difficult for the OSET chapter. It messes with their books, it makes people cranky, they don't want to be holding on to your money. That money is for you to put on your event. Um, you don't, as far as I know, need to show any receipts or um, sort of uh, justify it exactly. We have your budget. You Once you get approval for your funding, it's assumed you will spend the money in that way. You don't get any extra money if you go over budget. Um, that is up to you. If you end up spending more money, I'm afraid we're not able to issue additional funds at this time. Um, however, the bonus, you know, the sort of corollary of that being that if you end up under budget to what you thought, let's say you request $700 and you end up only needing $600, we authorize you to use that excess funds, that extra set, that extra hundred dollars. Use it to um, to make your event great. Uh, use it to appreciate your volunteers. Uh, use it, uh, spend it on publicity. Um, you invest it as you see fit, uh, or save it till next year. You're also fine to do that. Um, this is the money that we give to you. It's to cover your expenses. We don't intend for you to hoard it or definitely don't put it in your pocket. Uh, we want to make sure that, that it, it goes to where it was supposed to go to make your event as, as great as possible. So everybody gets the maximum is $700. Um, and so in that way, it's a very level playing field. Everyone's got the same resources. See how creative and how uh, resourceful you can be with that money. So make sure you get it. The check goes to your OSET chapter. I repeat, the check goes to the OSET chapter, and then you need to go get the money from them. Uh, so I guess this is, in a way, this is our way of making sure you're talking to your OSET chapter. They are a source of uh, support and information as well as funding. Uh, you're going to make contact with your judges. You don't have to recruit judges, uh, students. Don't worry about that. We will do that for you. We will be recruiting judges in January, uh, finding someone who's in your local area who is going to come by your event and be the judge or sort of be the, the witness to all the great things you're doing on the ground. No need to be nervous about the judge. They are there to help you and they're there, uh, not sorry, not to help you per se, but they're there to help make sure that what you've done gets recognized and gets recorded. They are, they're there to write down all the great things you're doing and you should definitely talk to them, make sure they know where to park, make sure that they know uh, where, you know, what room number they're supposed to be in, um, any of those sort of weird last minute logistical details. Um, that's up to you to make sure that your judge can get there and see what you're doing. Um, and you might want to make sure if you've got some, uh, if you've got some food as part of your event, make sure there's enough for the judge. You don't want the judge to be hungry and cranky. <laughs> Um, some of you might know there's something called a scorecard, which is a self-evaluation tool that we invite you to use. We actually require you to submit the scorecard and submit it to us um, so that we can see how, basically how the event went. Um, and once we get your scorecard, that is a trigger for us to give you your second installment of money. So generally speaking, we give half the money up front in the first installment, which comes in January, and then we give the, the second payment basically as soon as we receive your scorecard. So because of the competition nature of the college challenge, we will need your scorecard by the end of March. If you do not get it in by the end of March, you risk losing serious points that will pretty much take you out of the running for being the top ranked team. The scorecard is a component of the points that you receive. So in other words, this is like skipping the midterm that's worth half your grade. You don't want to do that. You want to fill out the scorecard. You want to get it into us on time. Um, that said, the scorecard itself, the, the score that you give yourself, is not as great a factor. So don't feel obligated to give yourself 100% to try to give yourself a, you know, a, better, um, a better shot at winning. Basically, the fact that we have your scorecard, if you're honest, um, which we expect you to be honest and transparent about what went well, what could have gone better, how many people you had, how well you did on budget. Um, you can learn about how to uh, fill out a scorecard properly in our um, 
measuring event success uh, webinar. There, there's going to be another one of those. That's that's a different uh, a different topic for another day. But anyway, I just wanted to flag that for you. Put that in your calendar, in your app, on your phone, whatever. March 31st, got to have that, that scorecard into us. That's super important. Um, then watch your email for your rankings. Uh, we're going to take all the material that you send us. Um, you know, we don't just want the scorecard. We also want photos. We want um, any write-ups that happened in your college's newspaper or on the blog or in local media or whatever else you managed to accomplish to show us how great your event was. Send it all over. We're, we will mull it over, go through all of the, the scoring and, uh, and assign rankings accordingly. Um, so then, uh, again, a little bit of bookkeeping here. Make sure that you claim your second installment of funding from your OSET chapter. Your check will come back to you, will come back to the OSET chapter, sorry, after we get the scorecard, okay? So uh, as soon as we get the scorecard, we'll issue the second uh, payment. So OSET chapters and faculty advisors, I know there are some of you on the call here as well, uh, hopefully watching the video replay also. Um, here's a little bit of what we're hoping to get from you as far as making the uh, challenge a success. Make contact with your student teams. Go say hi. Um, ask the students what they're up to, what they're thinking, uh, what, what kind of an event they'd like to run. If you can offer help to them, that's even better. Um, you can offer to recruit volunteers or speakers for them, um, send them help to help them to design the event. If you have any ideas on, you know, there is a, there is a place for you and how that could be illustrated. I'm sure they'd be appreciative of that. Um, they may already have a venue. They may already have a theme, um, but you could offer, you know, any input that you have. Um, I'm sure they would really appreciate that and enjoy the opportunity to collaborate with you. Um, I've seen events turn out really well where OSET people um, sort of take a bit of, uh, of interest in the event. That, that's when the students really soar. Um, this is a little bit ahead of time, but I'll give you the heads up that we will be looking for judges in January. Once we have finalized the venues and the dates of all of the student-run events, um, we will be looking for judges. So we generally need one person, ideally two people per event to go out, see what's going on, um, and we're going to need a lot of judges because we have a lot of student run events going on this year. It's a good problem to have. Um, you can help us recruit those people um, and we can give you more information again about the role. Um, it's generally just a, it's, it's a fun day. It's a couple of hours. Um, it is often during work hours, so that can sometimes be a bit of an obstacle. But if someone has a bit of, of a flexible work schedule and would like to donate a bit of time, this is a great way for them to get involved. They write up the report, send it in to us, and they're done. Um, other things OSIT chapters can do, um, obviously passing along the installment of, of funding in January, the first installment, and in April, the second installment. Sorry, I've just got something in my throat here. One second. Ah. You can also attend the event, show up ask questions, be uh, be interested, help the students promote the event perhaps ahead of time. Um, they might invite you to hold a booth, uh, some kind of presence on behalf of the OSET chapter. You can talk about that with them, work it out. Um, I've seen that extremely successful as well. So the events happen in March. Then after that, as I mentioned, the second installment of the funding comes in when we get your scorecard. And then um, just generally give back uh, feedback. These students that are taking the time out of their busy academic schedules to put together an event, um, these are your leaders of tomorrow. These could potentially end up being members of your OSET chapter. These could end up being chairs of your OSET chapter or of your OSET chapter committees. Um, they're showing a lot of leadership and a lot of, um, I would say, complementary skills, project management, uh, communications, uh, organizing things, uh, delegating. There's a lot of skills that are required. Uh, they're non-technical skills, mind you, but very important professional skills that these students are, are showing and excelling in. Um, so you, these, are the, these are the sorts of people you want to get to know. You want to have them on your LinkedIn, uh, in your LinkedIn network and uh, otherwise involved, you may wish to invite them to your chapter meetings. Um, really up to you, but basically we're hoping that you will build a relationship and get to know these teams and, and generally celebrate and recognize what they're doing uh, to promote OSAD and to promote engineering and technology in general.
So a little bit of must read info. Uh, this is more for the students, although anyone is welcome to check out um, what's been done in the previous uh, in the previous um, challenges. I'm just going to click on this. I hope this works. This is a little bit of an embedded link here. Um, the challenge in 2014, uh, again, as I, I said, had several um, successful entries. Uh, the teams really, you know, stepped up to the plate. They This was something that we'd never done before, and we put it out there. Uh, we put out the challenge, and a whole bunch of people answered back. So here's just the basic information. Uh, the first year, it was Confederation College that was the top-ranked team, and they held a career fair and tech conference. So what you'll notice here, there are some comments from the judges. What we saw amongst all of the teams, what they were best at doing, and then what other teams can learn. So these are just direct things that you can implement into your event. Uh, students, I'm talking to you here. This is basically the book on the best ways to run an event. Here we see uh, Sheridan. They were ranked second. They did a great job with their Get Innovative um, uh, display. And then the uh, Seneca did the Fire Protection uh, uh, Student Association. So again, you can see each each uh, each event, uh, we had 10 event teams representing seven colleges. So that was pretty good. We were very happy with that. We'll just switch over here to NEM 2015. Again, this is all up for you to peruse. Um, last year, drum roll please, most of you know that it was Centennial that, wa that uh, was the top ranked team, um, supported by OSET Toronto East. And they got some great comments from the judges. Here are all the things they were best at, and here's what other teams can learn from them. So students, I encourage you to check out the, uh, the college challenge, basically last year's rankings, to learn from what was successful in the past to figure out how you can in incorporate that into your, um, into your event. Uh, another thing you can check out, uh, access to resources for doing great engineering outreach. Uh, there is quite a lot of information here. If you care to look at it, here it is loading up here on NEMontario.ca. Uh, you don't so much need these funding guidelines and messaging guidelines because most of you have already submitted your funding applications, which is great. Um, but you also you have these participant surveys, you have the event checklists, your scorecards will be emailed to you. Uh, you'll get those in January. Um, past webinars, very, very valuable. You can look at the slides or you can look at the video replay. Um, we try to keep uh, as up to date as possible with all those previous webinars. Uh, we have a newsletter that you can subscribe to and we write to you in general once a month, although it gets a little bit more frequent as we get close to March um, and give you lots of ideas on how to do effective outreach, step-by-step uh, -step guides, um, and there are some other additional resources here uh, that we're always keeping an eye out for what other people are doing in the space of engineering and technology outreach. And, uh, you know, we're not holding anything back. We want to see you succeed. We want you to do a good job. Uh, look through this stuff, you know, treat it like a, like a school project. Um, look at what the best practices are and then go ahead and implement them. Put your own spin on it. Make it yours. Um, but, but utilize the information that's out there. We definitely encourage you to do that. So, wrapping up, we've got our key dates for the OSET College Challenge. Right now we are in December. Funding decisions are being made and will be communicated via email. Um, we're going to have event listings up on NEMontario.ca, so if you had any TBD information to be decided, to be determined, you're going to need to fill that in in January. Uh, that is very important. First funding payment will be distributed, as I said, to the OSET chapter. Students, you'll need to make contact with the OSET chapter, uh, not only for general support and planning purposes, but to get your money. That is absolutely important. Um, merchandise will be shipped to the main organizer. We have your address. If you don't want us to ship merchandise to that address, get in touch with us right away. Um, we've tried over the years to be as specific as possible about the fact that we need a, uh, an address we can ship stuff to. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't, uh, we don't want to ship something to an address that actually doesn't exist and end up, end up having it come back to us. That's happened before. <laughs> um, National Engineering Month, yay, the big party happens in March, all the hard work pays off, and you'll hold your event, you'll have a great time, um, you'll wow the judges and they will send in their reports to us. You will do your self-evaluation, your scorecard, 
Um, send all of that in as well as any supplementary materials. That's really anything you want to do to show us how great your event was. Um, any additional photos or materials, brochures that you made up, uh, people you had speak at your, uh, at your event, any kind of media coverage, links or newspaper clippings, whatever you got, just send it all over and uh, we will be suitably impressed. Uh, and judges reports will be sent in as well by the end of March. We will compile everything together in April and uh, send out the funding checks, first of all, and then notify our top ranked teams and, uh, and publish the same sort of write-up that we did this year with the comments, what that team is best in and what other teams could learn. And it's just been wonderful to see the, the bar getting higher and higher year after year. Students are doing bigger events. They're getting more ambitious in scope. Um, they're starting to really thrive off of the uh, and feed off of the energy and the uh, the lessons learned from previous years. So last year, uh, again, there's the picture of uh, Stephen Morley, who's the president of OSET, who was uh, was on hand to congratulate the students, say, you know, well done. You are our future uh, leaders of engineering technology. You are ambassadors for the profession. You're inspiring the next generation and you're doing a great job all out of you know, out of your own, uh, on your own steam. They're not receiving any uh, extra credit to do this. Uh, they're not getting paid uh, other than the cash prize, which I, I guess uh, is, uh, is a little bit of a recompensation for all their time. But really they did it because they were excited to celebrate engineering and technology and to, to create a, a, a conversation and a community um, around what they're doing. So if you would like to be in their shoes, holding a big check and getting that from the president of OSET, um, then I hope I've given you a really good idea of what you need to do. My name is Erica. There's my email address. Alan is the other main contact person for the challenge this year. Alan Ham at EWB.ca. Um, that obviously we already went over. Ended up at the back here somewhere. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. This is the last thing I wanted to show you. We are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the hashtag you want to use this year is NEM2016, and the handle is NEM Ontario. So uh, I hope this has been really useful. We're just coming up to about the, the 50 minute mark. Uh, so I'm going to now uh, stop recording and open us up for questions. Uh, Hope everyone has enjoyed the webinar and thanks very much for listening. Good luck to everyone that is planning to participate in the College Challenge in 2016.